I get to learn limitations, but I am not learning and expecting and stand, instead of saying, why are they in my world? Where did they come from? Now yeah. it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you make yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting because that was one of the wonderful lessons that I, you know, you get from, from the teachings of Jesus. It was like, you know, e even with that, I'm like, people who are going through stuff are also gravitating towards the light. So you got yeah. the sick, you got the, the people who are feeling lonely or depressed or whatever mm -hmm. that are looking. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why, you know, why we do what we do. It's like here, my cup runneth over. So right. Have a sip, have a sip, right. Yeah. So I get that. I get it. I don't, mm. I, I try not to, but we to do have to be. But I, I am, yes, I am always like mindful and aware of um, that there are some those dynamics. It used to be really interesting when I was. Well, I'm still on radio. But. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say that when you said that earlier today. Like, well, I know you are, well, not used to it, but have become acquainted with those mm -hmm. type of uh, oh, oh, <laughs> energies. Oh, <laughs> yeah yeah girl i you know i can tell you i know you can. <laughs> I can tell you some stories uh, but so i'm 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 always mindful and aware and i will all you know i usually tell somebody to when i'm ever whenever i'm um that's wise yeah whenever something like this crops because mm -hmm. it just you know I, I don't like to, uh, yeah, I like for, I like to. Don't go it alone. Yeah, I, I like to have people know. So anyway, you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and it's funny because I don't know if you ever, like, so there's some show that I started watching. Um, I, I, I want to stay, say it's called Stay Close. It's on Netflix. It's a new mini series. And um, I was watching it because the the actress, this the lead actress, played on this show that I really liked. Um, one of those lost shows, um, The Good Wife. She played on that, and so it's funny to see a. I, I guess it's a British film okay. or British series, and she's on there. And so during the course of me watching it, I'm like sitting up there thinking to myself all the time, like, why, why don't y'all talk to each other? Why don't you mm. say, hey, I got attacked on such and such a day, or this person <laughs> showed up on that day. If you, if everybody wasn't running around keeping secrets, it would solve some of the problems y'all had, but nobody's talking to each other. I just, you know, and so that, that is just always interesting to me how people don't talk to one another. They don't say stuff. And it's like, I'm, you know, that, that will not be my case. Mine either. <laughs> Unapologetically, I'm not going to, I'm going to change that face. Unapologetically, <laughs> I don't have any secrets. Well, I don't, at least I talk about them. So I guess they're not secrets. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and, and true enough, we are, I think everybody is selective about who they tell what. Mm -hmm. um, but that we say it yeah. um, is, I think, always important. I had a girlfriend who um, anytime I was going on a date or something, I was always texting a name, sometimes even a license plate if I was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But I'm usually letting people know, oh, this is what I'm doing. This is where yeah. I'm doing. This is, yeah. where, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I can't ever say that people didn't know. I'm not trying to sneak. I, no. Um, and yeah. And it's good for accountability, I think, is family. I think accountability is community. And we got, I don't know why or where, because, well, you know, there's enmeshment where everybody know everything and everybody's got to comment on everything. That's, that's my family. Um, but, um, but then there's just a, a sense of community and family. Like I want to, I want someone to know that I'm always safe. And I think that that is, um, that's healthy to, yeah. to, even if you're going away like me for three days in the middle of the Amish country, I think it's good to somebody knows 
Uh, my parents want to track me on 360. That's not happening. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know where I'm staying. And that's it. Turn the 360 off. Like, leave me alone. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't have any trackers on me, but um, <laughs> but but I will. I am quick to to shoot a a text message or an email and and say that this is this is what's happening this is where i'll be something like that this is yeah. where i'll be with. um something like that i just i just don't just i want somebody to know <laughs> somebody to know somebody always know. checking in on me so yeah and 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 it always uh it's always amazing to me the numbers of people um you know who was that was telling me about um i had a friend of mine that had passed and you know they were like well when we found him it was you know it had been or something like that and it's like yeah you know if if when the last time you talked to Sam, if somebody hadn't said like yesterday, um, <laughs> if they hadn't seen me, you know, I'm sure somebody would be like, hey, what, you know. Um, Girl, when I tell you my family is enmeshed, I lived in Kansas and my parents have done two wellness checks uh, on me. They're in Cleveland. I'm in Kansas. Yeah. It was like, uh, we haven't heard from you in two days police ah. we got a call to come and check on you oh my god i'm not kidding so i have to make yeah. announcements when i'm going under when i'm going underground i have to say hey you guys i'm going mm. underground for three or four days because i love to do that i love it it is euphoric for me um and um but i didn't know that i needed to to check in so twice my parents and i mean you know it was well deserved because i was going through a divorce or whatever but yeah they i'm there in cleveland sending yeah the, you know the uh over the park police to my yeah. to my door <laughs> yeah i i just had um you know that was that was one of those things where that i was considering doing i sent a couple of people to jessica's house oh um, okay yeah I, I remember yeah yeah when i couldn't mm -hmm. find her it was like that was an option like mm -hmm. police over there but you know she turned up mm -hmm. but, but yeah i you know i have done that i've done drive-bys on people because you know but yeah. but but um you know my brother used to do that my brother used to disappear or, you know, he could be in the house, hear mm -hmm. you knocking, banging, hear all of this stuff and would not. Is the oldest? Mm hmm This is the one that passed. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm like, that's a firstborn syndrome. Yeah. He would just that's what we respond. <laughs> like, get away. He wasn't the firstborn, but you know. No, he, he wasn't. He did have some substance. Oh, um, gotcha. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And that yeah. could be scary. That that can be very scary um yeah. to to not be able to reach um even similar to like jessica being sick when you know someone has a sickness and then they're not responsive that can be very terrifying to say that and, yeah and um and there was i have known people because my brother had diabetes but i've known people who were diabetics and um and the the you know the situations it's like if people are calling you it, you know respond if you're okay mm -hmm. you know it, even if you just send a k you know yes. it's, it's, <laughs> yes. it's terrible to have people good morning michael good is morning it, yeah, it's terrible to have people worried about you or concerned for your welfare and you just ignore it as if you, you know, as if it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and so I've known people who've fallen into diabetic comas and different stuff like that. And, you know, yeah, I'm dealing with that right now with, in our family, my mother's sister, and she's yeah. an isolator. 
and she she's one you can knock on her door and not answer yeah so i totally get that and we had to you know she had to go to the hospital found her on the floor like just let's just yeah so and, yeah. and, it's, and it's different if you can't like you know i i've had people especially since covid i've had people who can't respond like they can't answer the phone mm -hmm. but it's not because they are you know but it's just because they don't have the breath to so so it's still you know text message or something and then you know there's always that question well who has keys to your house because you know we need to figure out how to how to check up on you mm -hmm. um and so my sisters my sister and brother came over here one night i had um and, and then i'll get off of this but i had gone to at the time it was called the pewter mug and the pewter mug had all you could eat crab legs they used to run these all you could eat specials and i went there stephanie and you know how you know how black folks are <laughs> no please tell <laughs> you go to the bathroom to make some more room you eating so much right i was like <laughs> so many crab legs and that night i got in the bed and i woke up and i was throwing up everywhere i thought i was going to die did you have food poison i don't know oh my have, but i thought i was gonna die and i called my sister and i was i i I wasn't even really able to get it out. But the next thing I know, I'm, I, I was, you know how um, you're so sick and you've, you've heaved so much that you don't even want to change your own sheets. You just kind of laying in your stuff because I was just that sick. And then all of a sudden I hear this knock at my door and I'm thinking, I got to get up. What, what is that? And so I pulled myself up and it wasn't even the knock at the outside door. It was at my kitchen door. Oh. And I get up and I'm looking and I was like, girl, I'm covered. <laughs> and my siblings are out there at the door. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? My sister, my brothers. I was like, uh, I was like, I can't stand here and talk to y'all. That we come in the house. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. But yes, they came in the middle of the night over here because I was just uh, and and so now I have to make sure that when I'm saying that I'm sick, don't come, don't come, please don't come, because <laughs> that's even more trouble to try to get up and and answer the door and all of that stuff. Just just you know pray for like, me just pray for me <laughs> yeah let me <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so, oh gosh so yes. yeah anyway um so you know i get i get so excited about this material um yeah, because I, I, you know, it, it's, it's so good. It's so good for me. Um, so yesterday we were talking about um, teachers and truly great teachers when we left off and how um, teachers don't get caught up in whether or not you believe in their teaching. And one of the things that I will say, it, you know, I like to say too is is that when you are learning something, sometimes it the learning something growth has a painful feel to it. Mm -hmm. Like exercise. <laughs> you, say, you say like exercise and working some muscles you hadn't worked before, right? <laughs> and, and and so because it causes you to um it challenges what you think you know already 
And look what you, your hands did like this because it causes us to expand. You did just like this, like, yes. And that's what the words is like expansion. It does. It causes us to swell up. And, and that can be really, really uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, we might all out resist it at first right just like he when he was when they told him to go home go home exactly and deal with your parents and and, and he is just like ah, you know you know and and so it is this you know when we get in those situations it's it's almost like like okay we talked about this yesterday too i think you know like like let me walk away from this mm -hmm. let me let this marinate and sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a, a minute for it to marinate in your system um before you can truly say oh i get it right you 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 know it's kind of like you got to turn it over and and let it soak in and then try it out for size and stretch it around and and see if that and and it's interesting because sometimes you know people abort the process because it yeah just, yeah and, just, and so let me that's interesting that language because i was going to share with you that i don't know about everybody i'll speak for myself and then the people that i've worked with there happens there seems to be a theme of the stuff that we resist we send seem to do it over and over and over again. So I don't know, you know, Mark doesn't talk about all the other times that he felt like he needed to make a connection with his parents, but he didn't. But we we do that. And one of the things about people, oftentimes when people do, you know, have an abortion experience, they'll turn right, I, I was a director of an abortion uh, recovery center in Illinois, is that they turn right around and they become pregnant again because the body is so, it, it wants to do what it started. It, it wants to finish the process. And so when we abort something, we find ourselves right back in the seat again Wow! to, 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 re, to re, repair, because that's, we've been made that way to repair and to fix. And so when we abort, you're coming back around. It may look different. I don't know. And sometimes it looks the same because I've seen it over and over again with the literal with an abortion with abortions. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, when you were when we were when I was reading this, I thought to myself, how many times was he given a nudge to build a relationship with his mom or dad, and he just was like, no, forget them, like this, you know. And how many people did he meet in his therapy? Because we are taught the people who show up in our room are there to teach us stuff about us. Mm. almost always you should almost always see oh wonder why that showed up for me so how many people was he servicing mm -hmm. that were avoiding this moment as well right right and so you know and and it's interesting to me because a lot of times what you know there's there's this thing of people will say yeah well my parents are are gone on. and they think that they don't have work to do because they're gone or um, I got a good relationship with my parents. Um, and, you know, sometimes that is uh, a cop out too. Um, hey, Erica, good morning. Good morning. Um, it just depends on, you know, on a person's assessment and their resistance. What's the, what's, what's the excuse for resisting? Right. You know? um, and so there's, there's, there's that, you know, like we, we we stand in opposition to the things that that come up so i you know i i i, I understood we, of course we understand you know some of this stuff that he's saying but at the same time it's like eh, you know so he's you know so it, it, he goes on and um and he talks about this thing of um he says, regardless of the story we have about our parents, mm -hmm. right, um, cannot be expunged or ejected from us. Like, you know, it's it's not as if you can, that's a bypass point that you have. Oh, I didn't know my parents or, oh, you know, this. We, we have so many ways in which, <laughs> and, and I tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you that one of the things I do is, is 
is commonly I listen to how people talk about their parents to just get a feel for who they are. Yeah. And um and then and then I remember the conversations too, right? Because sometimes we have a tendency to hear it but not hear it, hear it but forget, or hear it and 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 it seems like something is amiss there, or the numbers of people who will talk about their grandparents or talk about an uncle or aunt, and you want to know, it's like, well, wait a minute, what, what, what about your you know, your actual parents, right? Not, not who raised you, but, but let's kind of back up and talk about that. And a lot of people are just not, um, you know, they, they stand where he is like, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that Mark said in here is that our family, our parents are our story. Mm -hmm. So we have to address that part of our story. I mean, even if we just acknowledge it, do that but they are a part of our story like it's a part of the story mm -hmm. is the, the parenting process um yeah but mm -hmm. psychologically it's super important because yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so they are in us they are a part of us and even if we've never met them rejecting them only distances us further from ourselves and creates more suffering mm -hmm. yeah so those two teachers could see it and I could not. My blindness, he says, was both literal and figurative. Mm -hmm. Now I was beginning to wake up mostly to the fact that I had left a huge mess back home. And so um, this is where, you know, he goes through and he talks about how he had judged his parents so harshly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he was, he was saying he imagined in himself to be more capable, more sensitive, more humane than they were. And, 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 and a lot of times, isn't that how, you know, how we think that we are better than, or we outpace or something like that. Um, he talked about how he blamed them for all the things that he thought was wrong in his life. Um, that my brother that had passed, um, that was one of the things that my brother was good at was blaming my parents or blaming and pointing the finger at other people all the time. He would, you know, even at in, in his 50s, he would say that the reason why he wasn't good was with money was my parents' fault. They didn't teach him this and they didn't show him how to do that. And there was blah, 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 blah about what they did not do. And it's like at a certain point, I remember saying to him, at what point do you teach your darn self? You know, I, I mean, but you didn't wait for an answer. Who didn't? You. Girl. Yes, did he I, give you an answer? What did no, he say? He, 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 he was making it seem like the pattern was already set. And I'm just sitting up there saying to him, you know, no, no, no. Mm. I, 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 can, I can recall, I mean, each and every one of us picks and chooses what it is that we pick up and read, right? My brother, Kevin, um, my younger brother, um, he picked up that Rich Dad, Poor Dad book and he devoured that book. When he read that book, it just changed so much in his life. I mean, it was like all of a sudden he was making moves like you would not believe and still to this day has a whole bunch of, you know, streams of income, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. um, my other brother, he be bragging about reading Charlotte's Web, calling himself a bookworm. Oh, I'm sorry. He he read a lot of Carlos Castaneda. Is yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still got some of his books on my shelf um, from my brother. But, you know, the, the things that he would read would never be about um, the stuff that he, the areas that he had the issues in. 
at least not from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, and I think we all can choose to do the work, but only if we can see or know the work, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you know it's your area, if you know that this is where you have a deficiency or um, a deficit, what keeps you from really looking at, uh, is it fear that keeps us from? Oh my goodness, yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. the I, fear, the fear of failure, the fear to stand on, stand on my own. So like, I don't know if your brother ever went to rehab, but so you go and you go to rehab and you you talk about the root of the addiction because the addiction is not the problem it's the reason why the pain that you're trying to cover up so if one time you know it's like oh something happened in my childhood and that's why so now the work to do unlike like mark you know like how how do i deal with this blindness and you find out oh maybe it has something to do with my connection with my parents so now let's go to repair that well if he doesn't choose to repair that now it becomes my reason why. Because the, the escaping the pain is just more, it feels better to escape the pain than to face the pain. It just feels better to, to, to escape the pain. That's what addiction is. It's a, it's a way to self-medicate. I'm gonna get out of the pain. And then you use, well, it's because of them that I'm like this. It's because of them that I'm like this. And some people use it to continue to self-medicate. And then some people use it as a reason to step out of their stuff. Like you don't get any more dominion over me. But if people, and some people don't make that choice and they continue to allow the pain, the, the fixing of the pain their way to be their narrative. Hmm. So I'll just repair my pain like this. And you get stuck on one little thing, go to rehab, get one little hook, and then you use it and you, it carries you through your journey as opposed to, oh, I want to find out about this then. If mm -hmm. this is them, then I'm going to go face it. I'm going to have a conversation with my parents. I'm going to, whatever you need to do to get out of your pain. Yeah, you know, but, but, but sometimes, it, it, well, all the time, I think pain is based on our perception. Well, yeah. It's, it's, Doesn't make it not real. Yeah, it's the perception that something is wrong when in fact it could be that, you know, say for instance, like my parents, we got five kids, we gave all five of y'all the same kind of, you know, the same kind of nurturing, the same mentoring, all of that stuff. But this one over here, he took it and what he did with it was something that was totally different. Yeah, because if you ask, you got five different perspectives of what was life like in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he had a different perspective right. of it. Yeah. He has made it, he has made it, um, he has made it bad. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is sitting there thinking like, dude, where were you? Where were you right. living? And what was right. that about? You know? Um, and so, you know, I, who knows that that who knows if those questions um will be answered or if it will be stuff that you know some some one other of us has to work out in our life mm -hmm. but but you know that was that was the that was the thing to try to figure out you know how can how what adjustments do we need to make in order to you know, to make this, um, oh, what it would, what if, if we are, um, what's the word that I'm looking for to, um, um, de I don't want to say demagnetize because that's not the word, but to, to neutralize something. It seems like you need to figure out what it is that needs to be neutralized in order for people to give up certain um, certain things. Like, so if it's toxicity, you know, if, if, if you got some acid in your kitchen, you know that um, if it's toxic, if you drop a little vinegar or some other neutralizer in there, that it neutralizes that. And it seems as though in our life, there ought to be something that we can bring to a perception 
that then neutralizes that so that it doesn't continue to be toxic for us. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, and there is, I mean, because we do, we must, not even just our parents, but anything that we choose and we're blaming somebody, we got to get to a place of exonerating either them or ourselves um, mm -hmm. or else, yeah, we got to let people off the hook because then we can let ourselves off the hook. But when we don't let our parents off the hook, we are not off the hook. We are not off the hook yeah. because we chose these parents. We yeah. chose them. They did not choose us. We chose mm -hmm. them and we chose their style. We chose all the stuff that comes with them. And so the question is, and what for? Yeah. And what for did I choose this experience? And and finding out what that what that is for, but um, everybody is not a well. I don't want to say it's not. I want to say that they, I guess they do the best they can while they're here on this part of this journey. Um, but blaming is is a dead end. Yeah, it's a dead end road. So he goes on to say that now he needed to return and restore what was missing for him. And he said it was his, you know, in, in particular, he said my vulnerability. I was coming to realize that my ability to receive love from others was linked to my ability to receive my mother's love. Yes. Now, how often is that the case? Always. Right? Um, On and attachment problems. <laughs> And, and it's so interesting to me. Um, so so here, here's a personal side of my story, right? So when I went through, when I was raped, I had problems with what I called allowing somebody, it, it wasn't as if I stopped having sex, but I did not have the ability to sit in that, to, 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 to let somebody hold me or to let somebody sleep with me or to let, it was almost as if like, all right, I'm done. You know, I got to wash this off of me and I tie it up in a neat little bow and throw it back at you. And it's like, no, don't that, that not. Right. And it was only through going through therapy that I was able to deal with that angst that anxiety about somebody because you were repeating the event mm. so so it was it took a lot of working through that mm -hmm. in order to get to a point where i realized i was rejecting the affection because i couldn't receive it I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't relax in that space. And I, and so that was my work to do. Let me really, let me really look at what it was that I was feeling in that space. Mm -hmm. And recognize that when, you know, and, and, and be honest with myself about when I felt not seen, when I felt um, used, abused, you know, because a lot of times what we do is, is we put ourselves back in the same scenarios again. Yes. You know, with people who don't see us or don't value us. Yes. Um, people have, you know, when, <laughs> when something like that happens, we've got to figure out how to value ourselves again. Yeah, because we're seeking to repair without the tools. We're seeking to repair that experience without the tools to repair it. So you think if you, it's crazy how we do this, but we think if we do this again, I'll do it different next time. But you don't have different next time tools. And so what then it's like- What do you mean by the tools? Like the tools to pay attention. Like, let me pay attention to how I'm feeling. Let me become vulnerable in this space. Let me understand that this, uh, that I'm pushing this person away. Let me feel what it feels like to relax in this. Those are tools. You have to learn to be present. And when you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you become, you are, when you don't have tools, you're reactive or you're distancing, you isolate. But with the tools, you can become 
present and you can relax, you can soften and be available, open at least to yourself. Because mm -hmm. the tools start with being open with in this space for me. You just happen to be the, the tool, the, the, the person that's showing up on my journey. I have to be more relaxed with me first. And you start to practice being relaxed for me. And then, you know, and, and I'm just talking about intimacy, the sexual intimacy parts when people keep having the same, you hear, you see movies where people do the same thing over and over and over again. And so that relaxing and becoming vulnerable is when that person gets the tools. That's the tools to say, I'm going to be present. I'm going to look this person in the eye. I'm going to, um, to say, do you see me first? And then I'll start to feel, do you see me? Those are tools. Those are those are tools that you learn to, okay. to become present with. Okay. When you said tools, I was like thinking to myself, like, is she talking about like a, 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 a wrench or a mirror or, or what? I was just... Well, I'm always talking about mirror. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I meant like that we continue to do the patterns over again until we realize that I got to bring some work into this. Right. Right. And, and so for me, it was, it was more of being present, allowing myself to be present and to be fully in my body. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, cause, cause so often we hear over and over again, people who talk about as if they zone out yes. or if, if yes. they leave the situation at some point or other. And, you know, cause, cause there's a part of them that just can't with that, that closeness. It's like, oh, uh, it just makes you, you feel some kind of way. If it's and, we can, and with sexual trauma, it's a pleasure pain experience. So it's like, I, I want to do the act but the, the amygdala, my hippocampus, this, this part of my brain remembers the other attachment to it. So I've learned from the trauma to shut it down, go someplace else, but my body wants to have this experience. Mm -hmm. And it's just this crazy paradox that's happening all the time until you learn to be present and heal that uh, mm -hmm. freeze, fight and flee, get the amygdala under control. Right, right. So 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 much of 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 you know what what we're talking about here is so whether it is the sexual trauma or um the disconnect from that we feel based on our feelings towards or about our primary relationship with our parents or even our yes. you know if if we always just kind of turn away because it's too painful to deal with, um, that that becomes, you know, in um, that becomes our our issue to deal with. There was this thing in um, in y'all. I'm gonna go here um, in S Star Wars where Luke was, um, you know, Luke needed to in, as part of his training you know he's up there with the yoda and he was like saying you know what's in that cave and the yoda says uh like told told him to go in there and he was like well what's in there and he says only what you take with you and and so when he goes Ooh, into, i like that yeah, when he goes into the cave he <laughs> gets so into this fight and he's, you know, he's fighting what he perceives as the demon. But when he slays the demon and the head comes off, he realizes that he was fighting himself. And I so, love that. Yeah, it is. It it it, it was such a a, a powerful lesson <laughs> in that you know a lot of times we think that it is our parents, you know, because we blame them so much. We've gotten so mad at them. We, you know, we're fighting up against that. But the real fight that we're having is our own perception mm -hmm. about what, or how we perceived what happened. Yeah. And I mean, and not that the perception is incorrect, 
but mm. it doesn't mean so to deny my parent is to deny to not deny to deny me mm -hmm. so it's not that the perception is incorrect but go do the work to find out what the perception is what's the reason why I go back to what you did with your father and it was like well yeah he was he wanted me to be covered and cared for so mm. You could have took that perception that something was wrong with you, but instead it was like, let me let me get more understanding. You were open to that. Mm -hmm. My my understanding with my mom, with her being so critical, was that she was 15 and she probably came from critical parents. They, I was a grandchild, so I didn't experience that part. Um, but um, but she needed to be exemplary as a parent. She needed me to be perfect because she needed to. Um, uh exonerate herself or wreck you know repair this giant what she may have perceived as this giant mess up that she's made of her life at 15 you know and so once I come came to realize that I just see it different I see her anxieties different I um the criticism still did the damage that it did I, the, I had to repair the damage the damage happened that we can't ignore that but to be blaming and to be upset with her and to put her at bay, um, it took a long time. I was in my thirties before I even uh, sh had a shame for my mother um, because my brother was the one that came to Chicago one day and he said, you act like our mother was Joan Cleaver. And it made me stop and say, am I in denial about something? You know, and I just had to pay attention because I had put whatever my negative experience was, I had kind of put it out of my mind and just began to live a life that I had the kind of mom that I needed to have. And everything was my fault as a firstborn. Everything was my fault, I, everything. If she said I did it wrong, then something was wrong with me. And so we, the perceptions are not unfounded. It's just what we do with them. Mm. It's what we do with them. Because our parents all do the best they can. Everybody ain't, don't know how to parent especially from our community, we, we, we are messes that we, 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 we show up and we try to create something that we don't even know how to create. We don't have, as parents, you know, you hear that you didn't come with a manual. It's true. Right, right. It's, right. <laughs> it's true. And so, but the perception is not that it's not factual or founded or experience is not real, but after a while we have to we have to exonerate them or else we'll never exonerate ourselves. Yes, yes. And, and you know, so part two, I, I guess the other flip side of that is, is that, you know, I know that for, you know, for us, there's this challenge of, of saying, you know, it is what it is, mm -hmm. you know? And that's not always easy, but but I can't go back and undo the past. I don't know that I would want to. Nobody can. But yeah, if if I can come to a space of acceptance, I don't I don't always have to understand or put it in perspective. I do now that I have. Um, now that I have, and, and, and me reading that one book, um, the, the Warmth of Other Sons, really helped me to see the exodus out of where they were, like the exodus out of the South and coming to the North. Yep. And it, it helped me to put it in context. Like, they didn't just like, oh, I'm moving to Cleveland. It was like, we are running from something, coming and looking for a better situation, a better life. And so it helped me to, to, to see my parents and my grandparents in a different light. Um, and the hope that they had for this new land that where they were, um, this desire that they had as part of community Mm -hmm. um, it helped me to see them a little differently. Right. So when I started to understand the context, mm -hmm. and, and even as I unpack this epigenetics and, and looking into my family history, as I unpack that, I understand better some of the things that they have gone through, been through, you know, so whether it was 
you know, my mother saying to me that, you know, you, you know, when I'm, I'm sitting up in college and I'm angry and stuff like that, she looking at me like, you don't know anger until you walk into school and you see somebody hang, hanging from a tree. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, okay, well, maybe I didn't see that, but I'm still, you know, this is my fight now. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. And to, and to another human life, that statement could have felt very invalidating and took them down a whole nother path. Like I'm never understood. Nobody ever gets me. You know, I got to always be in comparison to your life. That was your life. This is my life. So it could take another human ex having, having a totally different experience with something where she's just trying to say, this ain't so bad. Where, and you could right. hear that and still hold your experience and hear that where another human would be like totally felt invisible. Like, okay, well, forget it. Shut down. I can't even go there with right. her. Well, well, see, but but here's the thing. What now I understand is, is her trauma is my trauma. Mm -hmm. The fact that she saw that and was traumatized by it doesn't mean that it dissipated and disappeared because she no longer talked about it. If that lived in her cell tissue, it also lives in mine. Mm -hmm. And so I got, I got the stuff that came from her and, and her experience down there in Mississippi and, and your grandmother's <laughs> and his experience, their parents and their experience, that stuff lives in my being. Mm -hmm. And so when, so when I was talking about, you know, needing to work through these issues by being active. I needed to, you know, in college, I needed to let my voice be heard. I needed to have a voice of protest. Mm -hmm. um, and, and otherwise, I would have felt like, you know, and, and I think that, you know, when we talk about fear language, this is still part of my fear language is not being heard, mm -hmm. of, of my life not mattering. And so I'm constantly out in front of that because I don't want, it, it, my, part of my fear is, is the insignificance that comes with silence. Mm -hmm. So damn it, I'm not going to be silent. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't know where all of that comes from, but I know it is where I am. Mm -hmm. You so, could have said to all that is, let me go down there and be a voice for them. Yeah, I'll be a voice. I'll be a voice. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the work for you to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you know when when so so part of it is is like yeah. How do we? How can we be generous with our perceptions about our parents or our experiences? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or our experiences, because we're going to learn with Mark that he wasn't imagining the distance. It wasn't mm -hmm. something he made up in his mind, but he didn't have all the full detail. But everything started making sense once he got clear as to why there was this distance or this sen certain sense of smothering when he mm -hmm. would get close into his mom's presence. And then there was this push away um, right. that there's reasons behind it. And we just, understand there is a reason behind this nothing just happens then we can exonerate the experiences and yeah. get clarity on our perspectives I, right so when he perception goes home mm -hmm. yeah when he finally goes home um as, as stephanie was just alluding to when he finally goes home he he realized that he couldn't let his mother hold him you know there was always this like yeah okay that's enough like you know i i i, I can't he couldn't, he couldn't be up close and personal with her like that. And that, that, that inability for him to allow that with his mother affected his marriage as Why well. Why wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. And so we want to, we want to act as if, and, and this is part of the problem too, that we have with this thing called intimacy in our community. We want to make it seem as though what, that this stuff just like, you know, sex ain't intimacy. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's really not. Look, what so they do, snap. I want you to remember that. <laughs> 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 a 
okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that like the prop that we're supposed to have? <laughs> Snaps her finger, that means. <laughs> remember that, yeah. Remember, remember that, sex is not intimacy. Right, it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so people think that just because they have sex that they've had some level of intimacy. And when we crave intimacy, what we're craving is more than just being poked. It's intimacy. Right, yeah. right. So, so, so sometimes what we have to do, and, and, and this was what, you know, what he was, you know, he was aware of is that he had and and um and Brene Brown does such a good job of talking about how we armor up. You know, we we walk around in armor because we, you know, there's this part of us that we don't want people to touch. Our fear suits. Uh, yes. And so um, and so we wear this armor. We don't realize we're we're in armor, and then we ask why you know why don't you touch me or why aren't you intimate with me or why aren't you this right or why can't I why can't I stay in a relationship why can't I find the right person for me why can't why can't I what's wrong with me right 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 and so um and so part of it is is and 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 two I always I try to mention this all the time weight is armor right? When we put weight on, our fat on our body is another way of protecting ourselves. And so if we don't deal with the reasons why we need to have the armor on, we can never lay the armor down. Sila, and rest and think on that. <laughs> <laughs> and let it land. <laughs> let it land. I love it. Yes. <laughs> let it land. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's a good spot right there. <sighs> okay. Okay. So um all right. So so like like my my somebody might say, put that in the pipe and chew on it for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so we're we're we'll stick a pin in that, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll put a marker in there for today, and um, yeah, and just rest in that and see see how that feels, right? Mm -hmm. Because we do a lot of things to, um, <laughs> you know, I I got that. Uh, you know, that caused the deep sleep to come over at a moment, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that make us go to sleep. And sometimes when we feel as if we've gotten more than what we can deal with, yes. um, you know, we, we go to sleep on stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but don't look away. You, mm -hmm. you may go to sleep but wake up with it and and when you wake up with it you know see how this fits see if it is something that fits and then just figure out what you know the the tools what's the tools right and if the tools is to bring awareness to it yeah just it's a level it. of courage yeah you know a level of courage to not look away and to to stay aware or even just say, is it possible? Is it possible? And then finish the sentence. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that this is fear? Is it possible I need to do some work around my relationship with my parents, dead or alive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if nothing else, there's always, you could always sit down with a, a notebook and a pen and, and start to ask yourself some questions and then just free like like don't even think about the writing just let it let your hand write itself mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah it does doesn't it i mean just you know sometimes we want to we want to say the right thing our ego gets caught up in what what's right you know but 
just sometimes just just see what comes out yeah yeah, just yeah. see what comes out. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much, Miss Stephanie. You. Thanks. Hey, Love it. Ruth. Good morning, Ruth. <laughs> yeah, Ruth. Uh, you have a wonderful Wednesday as well. Wonderful Thank Wednesday. You all for being here. It was a quiet yes. one. Um, not a yeah. whole lot of comments, but I see that there have been presents. And so... Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, even if you're just listening, excellent. It's, That's awesome. You know, feel your work. <laughs> Our work. I ain't Our work. Like yeah. I, like I don't have. No, I haven't arrived. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. I do. Our work to do. Um, it is our work to do because we are one. Yes. Yes. And you know what? It's so funny. Um, Rhonda, this morning, uh, I tuned in at the last minute and she was talking about how she had finished this short story. And I was like, oh, cool, you know, congratulations, right? And she was started talking about how um, she says, you know, in writing fiction, the characters present themselves to you. So she said that there was a guy who in the neighborhood who, um, who she kind of kept in mind as she was writing this story. And I asked him, I said, well, was he fine? And she was like, no, not really. <laughs> right. And and the, the funny thing was, is I told her, I said that and in in the way that the way that I am is usually people who were unremarkable. As I was younger, if they were unremarkable, I don't even remember them. If mm. that makes sense. Okay. I, I, I draw a blank and people will say, we used to sit next to each other. It's like, do we? Really? <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, totally possible. But, but if there wasn't something remarkable about them, I totally is like, I draw a blank. Mm -hmm. Other people I know are not quite like that. I mean, I got friends that could tell you about people we went to high uh, elementary school with on up. They could name names and tell wow. you brothers' names. And I'd be like thinking, and that person is might as well had it just been a blank face for me. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, it's 8 billion people on the planet. We can't be responsible for remembering everyone. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so it's it's really just interesting to me. Um, you said, is he fine? All, all of that stuff, huh? I said you asked if he was fine. Yeah, I did because I was like <laughs> thinking to myself, like you know, did did I? I probably wouldn't be able to remember him enough to write anything or mm -hmm. to grab a picture or to get a mental picture about him unless there was something that was remarkable about him, right? Mm. I can make up stories about people who stood out in my mind. Mm -hmm. You were just like wallpaper. I didn't see you. I didn't see mm -hmm. you. I would have to make up something. So, um, so yeah. So. Well, all right. I'm about to go for my walk. Okay. And, uh, well, start my day. Okay, so Sarika and hey Sarika, yeah, yeah, wonderful Wednesday to you too. Um, send some love to Lynette for me, Ruth. Um, I appreciate you. You know, and, and okay, one one thing before um, one thing before I let you go, there was this woman, and I probably have told you this before. I was taking a a, a science of mind class, mm -hmm. and um, we used to sit in this class and we would sit in a circle and we would talk about different spiritual issues and everything. And this woman asked a question in the midst of class. And she says, how could, if God is love and God is good and all of this stuff, she was like, how does a God that is so good let a little kid be raped? Mm. And it was so interesting because I started talking and didn't realize that it was me talking. Hmm. It was almost as if I heard myself answering the question, but I didn't have a conscious memory 
of even offering an answer. But once, once I did, it was like, I wish I'd have listened to that, right? I wish I'd have, you know, I wish I had paid attention to what the heck I was saying. Because when I got ready to leave out of the room, the, the woman who, there was a woman there and she had, you know, she was a heavy woman, um, but she had walked out and then she turned around and she walked back in. And when she walked back in, she came over and she got in my face and told me that there are things that happened to her that she would never talk about. And how dare I come to church in the house of the Lord and start talking about something like that. And I was like, whoa, like, whoa, whoa. Well, where, where else would we talk about it, right? That's, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have it in me to ask her those questions but I remember her coming back and, and, and as my grandmother would say, read my obituary. Um, <laughs> and then leaving out again. And I can remember um, she had a daughter. And not only was this woman, she was one that she didn't like to be touched. You know, there was, you know, at church, she was, even when they, you know, when they, they, you know how they, they'll provide a moment where people could go around and hug. hug. Or, mm -hmm. oh, no. She didn't, she was never one to participate in that. And she had a daughter and her daughter was really uncomfortable with being held too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can remember going over and, and hugging that little girl anyway. And she was standing there with her arms down to her side, like, okay, I'm not gonna hug you back because that's not what we do. But um, I, would, I would do it anyway. Um, and so this, you know, that, it, that this brought up that for me, that whole question about intimacy and, um, and touch and, and, and the things that we do to protect ourselves the amygdala as you say yeah the things that we hippocampus yeah 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 just that oh oh my god that's such juicy that's so good okay thank you for sharing ah yes thank you um i i love having all this stuff put into perspective so Me thank too. you for you're your, welcome your wisdom Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing yours. And yeah, this is just so good. So thank you. I'm so grateful for life allowing me this opportunity. So yes, yes. yes. Well, to all of you, have an amazing Yay. Wednesday and pray for my feet. My feet feel like they're going to fall off when I walk in the cold these days. I got to figure out what that's about. It just hurts, <laughs> but I keep going out there. But yeah. yeah. Do you have some hugs? <laughs> No, I don't. I gave me get some off-brand Uggs. I just don't see the value in. Uh, I, oh, I got some off-brand Uggs. I got off-brand and I got some old Uggs that I just haven't let go of, but I don't even wear them anymore because they're so raggedy now. But um, do they have arches in them? Cause I'm I'm walk four miles. I I don't know. I don't know that. Um, I don't know that they have arches in them, but um. That fur is what keeps me. I know. Yeah. I, I, I was telling my sister, I said, I don't even put on socks when I put them in there because the socks are take something away from the, the warmth of the fur. So. Okay. Well, I may have to invest, but let me, yeah, but, just, yeah, I need yeah, some wisdom. So, Uggs uh, is one. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know if you, if you need art support. Um, yeah. Anyway. I do because I'm walking. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, it's just, I'll be having a time, but. Anyway, I just said that I don't know what for, but it came out my mouth. So yeah, it's cold out there. Maybe it's <laughs> cold outside. As a matter of fact, there's some folks you can look at look, look up on YouTube that'll say walk at home thing. Oh, I know. That's yes, a good no. idea, but I'm not gonna go there yet. I just want to keep until I can, until it's like I girl, is you crazy? Then I'll stop. But I like that yeah. feeling in my chest. It's so crisp. In my yeah, okay. <laughs> I, tell you, I have had winter dates where we went on walks and it's really nice but yeah, yeah. girl I, I i don't even want to ride in the car <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, I feel you. To the grocery so. store, and I just be thinking to myself, like, it's going to warm up this weekend. It's going to warm up this weekend. <laughs> good, good. Friday is our day. All right, you guys, I got to go. All right, All right. All talk right. to you tomorrow. Uh, see you. All right, y'all. Um, thank you so much for being here. And I will probably be on in a little while because I still need to do my radio show slash podcast recording. Um, but this was good. And I hope that you got something amazing out of it because I certainly did. Anyway, um, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Ad adore love and adore you. Mm, I get to see my little... Uh, Dandra Fallen. I, 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 yes, love and adore you. And I, I trust that you will have a wonderful Wednesday if I don't see you back on here um, when I do my podcast, radio show, all of that good stuff. All right. So have an amazing day. All right. See ya. I wouldn't want to be ya. But yeah, look, God willing, the creek don't rise. I'll see you tomorrow or if not later on today. But yeah, see ya. <laughs>